It is time to build your first run. We're going to use very simple materials to build this drone. We'll use wood as the principal component of the frame. We can also use other materials like plastic that can be found at home and very cheap electronic components that you can find online or on your local hobby store. Once you finish this drone, you will be able to fly very fast, make maneuvers and everything you want to do as any racing drone. Building this drone is the best way to get started in the drone world. So let's start with the building process. All the links to the components and plans are in the description below. Let's begin with a frame that is composed with these wooden bars, but you can also use other materials like aluminum. I'm going to use wood because it's easier to work with, cutting and drilling. Then I'll make a gap in the center of these bars to make them level when we glue them together. All the components that I will use are easy to find online. I used these motors before in a previous drone and that's why they have the ESCs attached to them. The power distribution board I will use doesn't have any voltage regulation, but I will use a buck converter to regulate the power that goes to the flight controller and receiver. The flight controller is an OpenPilot CC3D Mini. It's very cheap. You'll also need a receiver of your choice of at least 6 channels. It's time to glue the frame so it'll never come apart. While the glue is drying, check the alignment and measurement to make sure it will stay like that. I checked the weight of the frame because I'm curious and it was 47 grams, which is really good. I'm going to make a small space to the edges of the wood and also put some wooden extensions to touch the motors in place. I will recommend you attaching the motors directly to the main wood frame. I'm using this plywood as a motor base or extension and this will make easier mounting the motors. I use epoxy to glue the plywood to the main frame. It's time to take care of the electronic business. The source of the energy will be the battery, but the way to distribute the power is through a power distribution board, or a PDB. I have this one that doesn't provide regulated voltage to power the receiver and flight controller. That's why I will use a buck converter to regulate the output for the 5 volt that the flight controller and receiver will use. You don't have to worry because you can simply get a PDV that comes with integrated voltage regulators. Today you can buy one like this for 5 US dollars. You will need an extra servo connection to power the flight controller and receiver. So I'll do this step with a buck converter in case you need to do so if you don't have a power distribution board with voltage regulator. Even if you don't have a power distribution board, you could connect all the ESCs directly to the battery and then use the power converter to power the flight controller and maybe an FPV camera from it. So I just connected the power converter's input to the PDB's output and used this little screw to regulate the output voltage using a multimeter. Another way to regulate the voltage from the battery is using an UBEC to power the flight controller. The problem is that this is about the same price of a new PDB with all we need and for the same price we can get a pack of 4 buck converters. 
so this applies only if you have one laying around from your previous builds. The next step is to measure and drill the holes for M3 screws to put the standoff in place so we can put the top plate in which we are going to be able to put the battery and other components. Then I will put the PDB in the bottom part so I have the upper deck clear to put my fly controller on it. That's what I'm doing in my case because the PDB I'm using is too big and it's bigger than the standard so I cannot stack the fly controller on top easily. And also my fly controller is not the size of the standard, it's a mini board. But in case you're using a standard size boards, all you have to do is stack them one on top of each other using a nylon standoff. Now I'm going to cut this plastic container to build the upper deck. It will hold the battery, the receiver and its antennas. And also the camera when we put one. This is the way you can put more components on your drone. So the next thing we're going to do is connect the ESCs to the PDB. So we're going to pre-thin the PDB pads and also the cables to make the connections easier. In this graphic you can see how the connections are made. It's simply connecting the black wire of the ESCs to the negative and the red wire to the positive terminal. You have to repeat this process for each ESC. Don't forget to connect the ESCs to the motors with the three cables. And now it's time to connect all the cables to the fly controller. Every fly controller will look different, but essentially the connections are the same. So we have to connect the inputs and outputs to our fly controller and also to our receiver. And in this graphic you can see in detail how the connections are made. Here I'm connecting the cable that carries 5 volts to power our receiver and the receiver will power the fly controller. When we connect the battery, we can see that the LEDs light up. Then I will find a good position to place the receiver and I will make some holes to put the antennas through and extend the antennas at 90 degrees And now I'm going to use this foam material, which is sticky on both sides, to place the flight controller in the middle of the drone. The foam will also prevent the flight controller to receive some vibrations created by the system. The flight controller has to be placed pointing to the arrow's direction, which is the front of the drone. Every flight controller comes with an arrow indicating what's the front part or what's the alignment it should have. If you have to place the fly controller in another orientation, don't worry because we can set that up in the software indicating what's the new orientation. At this point we can connect the ESCs, taking consideration that the black cable is ground and white is signal. So if your fly controller only has one cable going from the output to your ESCs, just connect that one to the white cable. If your flight controller have PWM type of connections with the pins, it's easier to connect the ESCs to them. Then we connect the inputs of our flight controller to the output of the receiver. This is easy depending on the configuration you're using. I'm using the PWM configuration which I have to connect every cable to each channel. If you're using PPM or SBUS, IBUS or something similar, then it's just one cable that you connect to one channel. The next step is to create a new model in your radio and that depends on what kind of radio you are using. I'm going to leave that for another video and also we need to bind the receiver and radio together so we can talk to the receiver. This process is very simple and if you don't know how to do it you can search on the internet and you will find tons of information about that matter. These procedures are also different between brands and protocols so you have to find the one that matches your receiver and radio. 
You have two options when connecting the cables. One is just to plug the cables and just grab the axes and maybe put them somewhere hidden in your drone with some tape. Or you can just cut the cables to the long you need and solder them directly to the power distribution board and fly controller. That way you will save a lot of space and weight. This last option will take some time, but it will be really neat. The first option is faster to do, but it's a bit of a mess. I did the first option and now I had to put the cables packed together in the power distribution board section and then I have to put something to protect all of these things. Now let's finish with the receiver and to place the antennas in place we can use some zip ties to give them some strength. Cut the plastic axis, just being careful of not cutting the antennas, because it would be a disaster. And because I have the power distribution board at the bottom, with all the cables hitting in there, I will put some plastic protection, because this part of the drone will always be in contact with the ground in every landing. I will use also electric tape to cover the sides and that way this section will be protected from the external elements. And now we only have few things left to do, like making some gaps in the plastic so we can use a strap to place the battery. And now comes one of the most important steps and is the setup of the software of our flight controller. I'm using a CC3D Mini and that's why I'm gonna use LiberPilot to configure this thing. You can find plenty of information online on how to set up the software of your flight controller so I'm gonna skip this step and I'm gonna assume you will do that by yourself. Okay guys, and the last thing we need to do is of course put some propellers on our motors and you have to pay attention on what direction your motor is turning to and what propeller you're using in it because it has some configuration. Two of the propellers rotate clockwise and the other two counterclockwise. You can get some help by watching one image like this. This quadcopter is designed to support up to 6 inch propellers so feel free to buy 6 inch propellers or 5 inch propellers although I do recommend buying 3 blade 5 inch propellers so now it's just a matter of connecting the battery, turning on the radio and just arming the quadcopter and doing our first flight congratulations you have built and made your first quadcopter flight as a beginner, fly close to the ground, get used to the controls and the response of the drone and also just do basic maneuvers. Use the angle or horizon mode to start. The manual mode is gonna be a little bit tricky to start, so using an auto stabilize mode will help a lot. In the next video we are going to put an FPV camera and transmitter to be able to use goggles to see in real time what our drone is seeing. That way we can do some drone racing. I hope you have learned and enjoyed from this video a lot. Thanks for watching and see you in the next project.